Hello, yay! <laughs> Hi, everybody! <laughs> oh my gosh, Happy it's... It, oh, sorry, Hillary, I'm just so excited, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy TDIF, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dog, it's Friday, yay, yay, woohoo! <laughs> um, I'm just so excited because this is obviously our favorite day of the week, um, and we get to spend it with everybody we love, yep. so I hope everybody's doing well, had a good week. Um, it's been kind of a topsy-turvy, crazy world. Um, just the madness never, <laughs> never seems to stop. So let's kind of set everything aside and have a little fun and relax and enjoy uh, some time together. Hopefully this will um, be a lovely distraction. We've got super fun craft today. I can't wait to share it with you. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Patty Quinn of We Heart Hounds. I'm here with the lovely, the extraordinarily talented Hillary Buholtz. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got this gorgeous rustic pup clothespin wreath to, that we're going to do today. Um, I just love the warmth. It's kind of got this farmhouse feel about it. Um, and it's so super, super easy to put together. Yeah. Um, and it just turns out, I mean, truly stunning. I I was really surprised um, at this one. I just didn't think these kind of a couple of rustic pieces could create something so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so really just a couple of ingredients or supplies. Uh, you just get a wire wreath. Um, this one's about 14 inches. I'd say that's, um, you've got one that's what, 12? Yeah, I have a 12. They, they had either 12 or 18. So it was kind of, <laughs> it's either too small. I, I couldn't find my sort of middle ground there. So I went with the 12, which I do think works. So you'll see yeah. mine that size. I certainly wouldn't go any smaller than that. Yeah. But um, I think 14 is kind of the ideal size. It's nice. Yeah. And then I mine is 16 um, just because of the embellishment that I added was a little <laughs> large. And I wanted to kind of, I didn't want the embellishment to overtake the wreath. So that can also kind of determine the size uh, yep. of wire frame that you get. But these wire frames are really inexpensive. You go to the Dollar Tree, you can get them for a dollar. Like yep. just easy, easy peasy things to do and then uh, or to get. And then um, get some clothespins. Um, I ordered a whole stack of them online on Amazon. So if you're staying home, you can do that, um, or you can run to Walmart or the grocery store, and they'll they'll have them in the laundry section. Yeah, um, these ones are were in the craft, craft section, and okay, they come in go. little um, bags of 24. I needed about two and a half bags of them. I okay. had it was maybe a little bit more than a half I had of one. So if you get three bags, you'd probably be on the safe side for the size of wreath that you're going to be getting. Okay. Yeah, mine ended up uh, using about 80 clothespins. And again, that my wreath is about 16 inches in size. So roughly 50 to 100 yep. clothespins. And they're pretty inexpensive. So yeah. um, not And a I think your clothespins are a little bit bigger than mine. So mine are the 3.3 yeah. inch. So that'll make a difference mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. on like how many you need. So Right. I think mine are four. Get a few and extra just to be on the safe yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and so you've got your wreath, your wire frame, you've got your clothespins, and then just a little bit of paint and an embellishment, uh, mm -hmm. kind of a dog themed embellishment is all you need, really. Um, uh, but there's a really fun kind of rustic technique for painting that we're going to show. And Hillary's got some other options for coloring your clothespins as well. Uh, but if you want, here's a really easy tip to get a, a rustic look um, if you're painting, and that is just to get some water or dip your uh, clothespin in water. And I just brush it uh, to get it wet everywhere. And really what this um, does, it, it kind of gives your painting technique kind of a watercolor effect, um, which I really like. It it's makes it a little more controllable than watering the paint first um, before you paint the the the, the clothespin so it gives you a little bit more control which I like and then you can take really you're going to want it quite a few colors I would say anywhere from six to eight or ten uh, yeah. colors uh, just random they could be any kind of acrylics I've got a, a chalk paint here um, and then you just you're just going to dip your brush just the least little bit of paint and then you're just gonna spread that lightly on 
And again, you have a little bit more control over how much color. So you can always go back over it mm -hmm. uh, in places and you kind of want to randomly have some areas darker than others just to make it look worn and all that good stuff. Um, but I like this technique um, rather than, again, watering down the paint because then it becomes all one shade uh, or depth of shade uh, of your color rather than kind of that mottled old fashion kind of worn look yeah um which is nice and then again you don't want to cover it perfectly everywhere you go so um really just kind of nice worn look about it and then and the just... chalk paints are nice for this too because they dry really quickly and mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. kind of have that a little bit of an antiqued effect to them as well so that's that's kind of yeah. nice. You're getting kind of that dub matte double duty finish. there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which so is the nice. other thing you can also do is to dye them. So I used coffee uh, for one set of my one grouping of mine and then also just blue food coloring. So just boiled some water and great then idea. some blue food coloring. You can also use writ dye. That'll make it a little bit brighter since I mm -hmm. knew I wanted mine kind of looking aged and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the coffee worked pretty well. It doesn't give you a ton of variation of the color. It just kind of makes it that kind of orangey brown all over. But the blue food coloring actually came out really modeled and kind of the same effect that we're getting okay, with good. the painting. Good. So that's something, you know, you're not leaving it in there for a really long time. The longer right. you leave it in there, the sort of more uniform it'll gonna, it's going to be. But the food coloring may be a good one. Um, I didn't bother like taking them apart or anything like that. No. I just yeah. Yeah. dumped them in and it was good to go. So that's the nice thing about these is they're pretty much, I mean, if they're made to hang wet clothes, they're yep. kind of waterproofish in a way <laughs> they're, or they stand up to a little bit of water pretty well. Um, but it's really kind of fun. Just the, that modeled effect or that kind of blotted color yeah. effect that makes them look old. And again, you just want to get a bunch of colors uh, together. And then the technique of putting these together on your wire frame is really simple. So, you're basically going to use, oops, I dropped my clip there. Um, you're basically going to want to use um, these first three loops. This outer loop, you're not going to touch that at all. You're just going to kind of ignore that it's there. So the first clip will go on your first, the inner two uh, wire rings. And then your second clip will go on the middle two. And then you just go back and forth. So I'll show you the first clip is just gonna go on those inner two rings. And then the next one you do on those middle two rings. And then you just alternate that. I'll show you one more. So then you go back to those the inner two and you kind of get this in and out kind of effect and you can kind of squeeze them together a little bit and then you're gonna fill out the whole wreath and the look Hillary and I've got ours mostly finished. We'll finish it up a little bit here, but look at, I mean, these are just so <laughs> pretty. They're so pretty. So um, again, just doing that um, in and out kind of uh, effect. And we'll just finish up here. And for mine, um, for this 12 inch one, each little section, they have those little crossbars that are going through in the individual mm -hmm. sections. Each little section took about 10 um, clothespins for okay. me. So that's I think that's about the same for mine as well. It's just mine's okay. bigger. Yep. So um, I could I could count, but I, uh, I'm pretty sure mine was about 10 as well. Two, four, six, eight, 10. Well... Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep. Okay. Same thing. So anyway, I just love the the colors uh, can match any decor. Yeah. Um, the variety of colors just add so much interest and, and texture to the look of the wreath, which is really neat. 
And, and basically the embellishment that you're gonna use, um, you kind of, you can take cues off of the colors of it. If yours has got, you know, if your embellishment has some color to it, um, you can pick up some of those colors and some of the paint that you use for your clothespins as well. But this goes so fast and so easy. Once you have your clothespins painted or stained, it's really super fast and easy. And you can change things up. Um, you want to kind of mix up those colors so that you're not putting too many of the same color in a row. Yeah. Um, unless that's the, the pattern, you know, you're looking for. But, you know, I just put 10 more in there and we're, we're done already. So um, this just, it goes so fast and easy. It's so pretty. I just love this as is. Um, but of course we have to make ours doggy themed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's where the fun part comes. Uh, we're going to grab an embellishment um, that's, and I we we're using a couple signs, so yeah. mine says the best things in life are furry, and Hillary's customized one. Yeah, sorry, it's a little bit hard to see. So it says bless our nest, and then Aww. I just painted on some little paw prints, um, and they're kind of multicolored, mm -hmm. so that I'm using the colors that I I have for my clothespins, and then I just um, outlined the words. This is cut out of metal. I just outlined the words um, with a little bit of the blue that's being oh, used. Yeah, as well. yeah. I think that's a great idea. So not only you know you can find something that's already dog themed, or you can find something that you have in your house uh, or that you make, and you know put paw prints and and make it dog themed. Mm -hmm. um, to match, uh, you know, kind of what we're doing, um, which is really neat. And then our little signs. And if you don't have a sign or you don't want to make something, you can use like a dog paw print ribbon and put a bow on it. Um, you know, really whatever, whatever you have around the house or whatever is easy to find. Um, so don't feel that you have to copy this exactly. But um, these just turn you out so also, pretty. I was thinking you could also do just little dog, like little tiny paw prints <laughs> on some of the... Yeah, some of the clothes pins as well paw prints and hearts you could do yep. all the way around that would be cute or you could put your dog's names on some of these yeah. or names or dates or something so um yeah that would be really whichever way you'd like to customize it um it the sky's the limit and then um our little sign uh, has little holes at the top and really just grabbing some twine and we're just going to tie it to uh to the top of our wreath and let me see here. We'll do this quickly. But I mean, this for something that's so simple and easy to do, these this really turns out so pretty. And I I never made a wreath out of clothespins before. Yeah, I had seen them and I I like the kind of rustic look of them, but they really are more than the sum of their parts, you know, when you oh, start it's putting so it together. Pretty. And you know, if you wanted to, you could do a section of blue pin clothes pins and then mm -hmm. brown and then white and then you know green or whatever. So they don't have to be alternating colors in that way. Um, you could really um, customize however you want this to to look. Um, which is really kind of fun and you could change it up. I mean, you could change out the colors or change yep. up the pattern uh, for anybody that's interested in changing up I've their seen, decor. Yeah. I've seen some really cute ones that are sort of 4th of July themed. So red, white, and blue versions oh, of them yeah. and that yeah. sort of thing. So you can, you know, do them for whatever holiday. They are super easy. They're e they'd be easy for the kids to help with, you know, once you get it going, once you kind of have the, the clothespins colored, it's so easy to, you know, yeah. put them together. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I've got mine tied here and then I'm just going to turn, I'm going to rotate the twine so that the knot is in the back and then I'll, I'll cut the, the back. I'll cut them off a little bit, but just kind of hiding that knot. You don't have to, it's just a 
preference. And then I'll probably tie mine at the bottom as well. It's got a couple holes at the bottom, but oh my gosh, this just turned out so pretty. These are gorgeous. I just love this. So they really are fun. Yeah, they are really pretty. So anybody that tries one of these, please share pictures. We would love to see them. I mean, again, they're you can customize them to whatever fits your fancy um, <laughs> and your furry friends fancy. <laughs> and we would we would love to see how they turn out. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is a lot of fun. Thank you, you so are. much, everybody, for being with us today. Um, always love getting together. We appreciate each and every one of you um, from the bottom of our hearts. This is truly the best time of the, of the week for us. Um, and we just have a lot of fun sharing um, some ideas and hopefully inspiring you to go out this weekend and put one of these together and hang it on your front door or inside your house and, and enjoy. So. Yeah. And if you guys um, are looking for other ideas or recipes, we have a huge playlist full of all kinds of crafts, recipes, fun stuff. So take a look at those. Um, there will be links to those. And uh, if you know somebody that you think would enjoy some of this, it would really yeah. help us out a lot if you could share that with them as well, because we just love sharing this stuff and we think it's a blast. <laughs> if you have ideas that you'd like us to try, please share your ideas with us. We would love that. So exactly. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. Have, have a wonderful day. Enjoy your time with family and hug your pups for us. Thanks, Thanks so much. Everybody. We'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.